Today, we're gonna to talk about five things that help me transition from a nine to five job to a self-employed stay-at-home parent. These five things really helped me in my transition and I wanted to share it with you because it might help you out in your situation. Number one is setting a routine. Setting a routine is crucial because you no longer have a boss. You're your own boss and you need to make sure that you get your tasks done and completed on time and in an orderly fashion. That being said, one of the most important things is the morning routine that I set for myself. This gets my day going in the right direction and keeps me from getting off track right off the bat. The start of this morning routine is waking up with my wife. I find that waking up with your spouse is one of the most helpful things that you can do for two reasons. One, it gets you out of bed and gives you a purpose and a time set to get established and get moving for that morning. Number two is it actually helps your relationship with your spouse. The relationship is benefited because you first of all have extra time with your spouse just to chat, communicate, and work things out Either it's reminding each other of schedules, upcoming events, or just chatting alone is just really important in the relationship. Another way that it really helps in your relationship is, I want you to think about if you were in your spouse's situation and every day you were waking up, getting ready, for, ready to go to work, and you left and you left your spouse and they were still in bed lounging around, it would plant that seed in your head and a doubt of what are they really doing throughout the day? Are they just being lazy? Are they just lounging around all day? And it could create some jealousy and judgment. By you waking up with your spouse, it puts you on an even playing field because you're both getting up at the same time, you're both starting your day at the same time, and it just really helps out in that overall relationship. This also helps you not hit that snooze button. Hitting the snooze button is a dangerous thing. First of all, it really doesn't help you when you try to doze off for an extra 10 minutes. And for myself, I find my, my body actually wakes up even more tired if I would have just woken up with that first alarm. And also hitting snooze can be a dangerous slippery slope because you continually just hit it and hit it and hit it. And the next thing you know, you're way behind on your day. Oh crap. Now, after you've gotten up, Another thing is definitely get your day going in the right direction. Personally, I like to get a shower in the morning and always be sure to keep the soap out of your ass. It just gets my mind set in that frame where I know we're going, like it's go time. So my mind and my body are ready to go. But another thing is it gets me out of the clothes that I slept in and into appropriate attire for whatever my day is going to entail. No, no, uh-uh, no, not that wrong. And that's it. See, if you stay in the clothes that you slept in, you just feel tired, loungy. It can kind of put you in a lazy, tired state of mind. But by changing out of those clothes into appropriate clothes, once again, you're getting your mind and sending signals that we are ready to go for the day. Whether I'm working in the shop and I'm in my you know, car hearts or anything like that, or if I'm cleaning the house, I can be in a little more relaxed attire, but it's not what I slept in. Following with that is make your bed. I know I sound like my mother yelling at me every morning as a kid to make your bed, but it really is a good habit to get into. First of all, it makes the room look cleaner, which I don't know about you, but for me, a dirty house to me really creates a lot of anxiety and frustration and I almost get lost in what should I really start with. By having that bed made, it gets that room looking clean and I know that it's taken care of. Also, it doesn't invite me to lay down and actually go back to sleep for a nap or something like that that's gonna throw my whole day off again. Definitely make the bed. Number two is plan things out. I have a calendar with my wife that we have everything mapped out for the whole year and we constantly review it weekly and monthly just to make sure that when nothing slipped through the cracks because nothing's worse than a missed appointment or things like that especially now that you're at home there's no longer a work week so days can start blending together and there's really no such thing as a weekend anymore so you really want to set things in order and prepare every day for them and that leads into creating a purpose for the day. 
every morning after I'm done getting ready, I like to sit down and I like to go through my notes for the day and make a list of things I need to get done. Making a list not only allows you to not forget about different tasks that might slip through the crack, but it gives you that satisfaction and that reward of crossing things off every time you're done. This just builds more and more motivation for you and keeps you in an organized, motivated state of mind. Another thing is I like to use the Cozy app. Now there's a bunch of them out there. I like Cozy's just because I shared it with my wife. We can create lists for each other joint lists as well as grocery lists, things like that. And everything is transparent to each other. So we don't have to constantly remind it. If you're sitting there and all of a sudden you remember something, you can easily open up the app, put it on a list before it's forgotten, and then you're good to go. Also with planning out the day, I like to set time limits of when I wanna get different things done or when I have to pick up you know, my kids from school or take them to soccer. So my phone is full of alarms. Alarms are really important in my scheduling of the day because when you get on a task and say it takes a little bit longer than you anticipated, at least an alarm can go off and make you aware of, hey, maybe it's time to put this down. I gotta go to the bus stop to get the kids off or I need to take the kids to soccer practice or something like that. Or I have an appointment of my own that I was supposed to get on a Zoom call or something like that. So these setting the alarms is really helpful in just making sure that I don't get lose track of time and get lost in the day. This leads into my third thing, and that's time management. A lot of the time management can be addressed with making the list, setting those alarms, and moving in an orderly fashion through the list and getting things done. But time management can also be important in other aspects. Like taking your phone to the bathroom. Sounds silly, but how much extra time do you waste by flipping through Instagram or looking through Facebook because you have your phone on you? So leave it outside. First of all, it's kind of disgusting. Second of all, you're just gonna get in, get your business done and get out. In the same aspect, I like to actually play songs when I'm in the shower. Not because I like to sing, as you can ask my wife, my voice is horrible. Excuse me, but I was just taking a shower. Good singing. <laughs> now, this just helps you keep track of your time. We all know those cold winter mornings that you get in a hot shower, and it's tough to get out. But if two songs go by and I'm still in the shower, I know that I need to get my button gear and get out or I'm gonna lose too much time during the day. So it's just a simple thing. Rather than setting a timer, just to be able to listen to some music. Also, it can kind of put, you know, motivate you for the day, especially if you listen to Uptune, um, different songs like that. Just get your mindset once again in a positive outlook. And number four is get yourself involved in something. I have a business of my own that I run that gives me another purpose to do throughout the day. But it's also important to maybe pick up a hobby or join a club of some sort because when you leave your nine to five and now you're a stay at home, self-employed parent, you lose that network that you would have built in a work environment, say an office. When you're at home, it can be lonely and you can fall into depression. By joining a club or having a hobby and just becoming part of a community really helps you keep your mindset and allows you to branch out and socialize with, let's face it, adults. As a stay-at-home parent, you're pretty much talking to little kids. My brain is like oatmeal. I yelled at Kenny today for coloring outside the lines. Megan and I are starting to watch the same TV shows, and I'm liking them. I'm losing it. So it's really important to get into one of those just for your overall self-being. Now, these hobbies can be anything. My biz business is woodworking, which I really enjoy. I also have a hobby of fishing quite a bit, which I actually can take my kids and share with them but it just gets me out of the house. This is important because essentially your workplace now is the house. So you're never gone from work. Now this leads into my fifth piece of advice and that is take time for yourself. When you're working from home, it can be really difficult to turn off that switch of work mode and be able to relax and spend time with your family or just get away and 
just let the stress go. It's because you're always in the place of work. So you're gonna be constantly looking around, seeing things that you need to get done. And this can add to your stress and anxiety as well. So what I like to do is every night, I kind of take time and put myself in a quiet room and I'll put a movie or a TV show on or something like that where I can just relax, let go, and not be stressed over on overall tasks that need to be completed around the house. These are my five tips that I found very helpful in my own transition. If you have any ideas of your own, we'd love to hear it in the comments below. And feel free to share with the community as I think it would help everyone hear different ideas that might help you in your own situation. If it's your first time here at the channel, thank you so much for tuning in. We'd love to earn your subscription so if you could take the time to hit that subscribe button below and check out some of our other videos. Thank you if you're a returning supporter as you have really helped us grow this channel and to become what it is today and allows us to make videos like this. So thank you very much. And until next time, thanks for buzzing by. You take care.